Hi everybody, it's Andrea Vilma here. Welcome to Think Beef Cooking 101. Um, today I'm really excited. We are going to be making ginger beef and mushroom bowl right here. Okay, so first things first, as always, I need you guys to wash your hands with warm water and soap for 20 seconds, and then you dry them off. If you have long hair, put up your hair. If you'd like to put on an apron um, to protect your clothes, go ahead and do that too. Um, if uh, you are wondering where I got this from, it is from thinkbeef.ca. So I recommend you go there. Um, you can get the full recipe. Before we get cooking, I always recommend um, that everybody at home reads through the recipe in advance so that they make sure that they have all the ingredients and everything um, needed for the recipe. In addition, if you go to thinkbeef.ca, um, this little cheat sheet also includes your shopping list as well. So when you're going to the grocery store, um, you have everything. Also at thinkbeef.ca, um, there's an order resource center where you can order Cooking 101 recipe booklets so that you have a hard copy booklet of everything. So yeah, so make sure you read through the recipe before you get started. Um, I'm really excited to get going on this. Okay, so I've been doing this, um, as mentioned, I'm Andrea. I've been doing this for uh, a few years now where I go into schools. I'm a food and nutrition educator, um, and I've been working with uh, a lot of different farming groups, and I love uh, particularly working with Canada Beef, and today um, this is something that they, they really want people to increase their food skills and um, get out there and increase uh, food literacy in general. So I kind of give I give lots of tips and tricks on the best way to cook as I go through. So hopping right into this, I'm going to show you guys um, the first part of this. This ginger beef and mushroom bowl um, is kind of a take on a very popular bowl that you might have heard of, um, ordered at a restaurant called a bibimbap bowl, which is a Korean dish. Um, and usually it's there's rice on the bottom and then there's all of these delicious kind of veggie toppings and nice grilled meat or pan fried meat um, and then a nice runny egg on top um, with a sauce and then you just kind of you mix it all together really really delicious um, so getting on to some of those flavors what the first thing that I'm going to show you guys how to make is pickled carrots so this isn't like your typical pickles that you think of, like dill pickles. Um, this is sort of a sweet and sour um, pickling. Um, it's a quick pickle, so I'm gonna do it, and then you basically just let the carrots sit in it for about an hour. Okay, so I'll put this down so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I have an empty bowl, and in this recipe, what I'm going to do is you have, sorry, I just, you need to have a quarter cup of boiling water. There we go, still really hot. And then I put in a quarter cup of sugar. So this is the sweet part. And the reason you wanna put that in right away into the warm water is so that it mixes in well. Um, we're trying to get the hot water you can dissolve more sugar into hot water so that's why the importance of the hot water just to make sure that the sugar is really well incorporated and properly mixed in okay and then so once it's pretty dissolved we're going to add in half a cup here of vinegar and that is the sour tart part of this recipe. There we go. Keep on stirring. And then lastly, you want to put in the carrots. So you can see that I've cut these carrots already into sort of a matchstick. Um, but what you can also do um, is pre buy them like this. So um, I cut them up like this, but you can also go to the grocery store and get matchstick carrots. Um, that have been already cut up like this and that just makes it a little bit easier although I will say that this is 
So our julienne, so this is a knife skill as well. And this recipe is absolutely perfect for that <laughs> because pretty much all of the vegetables are made into little matchsticks or julienne style cuts. Okay, so basically you just wanna make sure that all the carrots are covered and you're gonna just set this aside for an hour and it just soaks up all of that delicious sweet and sour flavor that we've gotten um, between the sugar and the vinegar. So yeah, there you go. We'll just set that aside for now and come back to that at the very end. Uh, now what I wanna show you guys is one of the other toppings. So that's one topping down. Um, I'm sure you can see from the picture and if you've read through the recipe already, but there's quite a few different components, different toppings that go on top of this. So um, one of the fresh components that goes on top um, that has had zero processing is a daikon radish. Um, it's optional, so you don't need to do this, um, but this is what a daikon radish looks like. I wanted to show it to you guys. Um, and basically what you can do, I'm just gonna show you guys how to kind of cut this up. Um, in terms of flavor, it's um, if you've ever had a red radish, how it's kind of peppery and a little spicy, um, so it's a much milder version of that flavor. So it's kind of a nice in-between. <laughs> okay, so I'm cutting this, the ends off right here. There we go, put it in a little waste bowl side. And I will just whoop, use my vegetable peeler. So this is basically, I wanted to show you guys this too because this is what I did for the carrots. Um, and this is also the cut that I'm about to do. I didn't peel the cucumber, but the cut that I'm about to show you guys is what I did for the carrots so that you guys can kind of see how that works, okay? So here we go, and I'll set that aside. You guys saw the daikon radish, so as always. So this is with a chef's knife, a way to do it. Um, you just wanna get that first flat surface, right? This is a round vegetable once again. So now we have a flat surface. It makes it a lot more stable. I've, as always, I have my, um, my <laughs> sorry, my damp towel underneath so that my cutting board isn't going anywhere. And then what you wanna do is, as always, the claw, keep your fingers out of the way and then keep the tip of the knife on the board and you're just really running your knife through it very, very thin. There we go. And there you go, you'll see like, so we already have some thin uh, pieces going and already I can kind of smell the daikon radish. It's a little peppery, but not near as strong as your regular red radishes. There we go. And then once you get to this point, you can kind of Stack them up a little bit, but always, always, always keep your fingers tucked when you're running the knife through. As always, if you're not comfortable quite with using a chef's knife, um, you can kind of use the same skill set with a paring knife. So I have a paring knife here. Still, you want to always make sure that you're doing that claw with your hand, and you just use the tip of a paring knife, and you kind of just run it through. There you go. There we go. You can still cut full slices with the paring knife. There you go. And just yes. The paring knife is nice just because it does have a lot of control whenever you're using the tip of a knife, right? Using the tip of a small knife does give you a lot of control. So this is now the, the new flat surface that we're gonna use. So then you just keep going until you roughly have enough of what you're looking for. I'm just gonna, to keep everything kind of going, I'm just gonna cut up enough of the daikon radish for one bowl, because that, that's what I'll put together for now. But you're looking to have enough um, daikon radish cut up to have to use um, for everybody, so this recipe makes four bowls. So that's kind of what you're going for. So I'll just set the daikon radish aside now. Uh, okay, get a little bowl for this. Oops. 
Don't worry about that. Here we go. And there we go. So we can set everything aside. You can see that for another topping, I already did that um, with the cucumbers. Cut them into nice thin slices. Um, and something that I did want to talk about as well now is the mushrooms. So I've already gone ahead and sauteed them. Um, you can see that it's like, these aren't necessarily um, hard things to do. It's going to give you a lot of practice in slicing. Um, but there's like a lot of little components that go on top of it. And that's why I absolutely love this dish. It's so bright. It's so beautiful. And once you get it all together, it is so delicious. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do... Um, I just want to show you guys kind of how you would do a um, a sautéed mushroom because I don't think that's one of the toppings on this and I don't know if everybody knows how to do it but it's a perfect life skill to have because sliced mushrooms go so well on so many different things. Um, they are perfect um, on steaks, on burgers, uh, just to enjoy on their own. A lot of people really, really enjoy sautéed sliced mushrooms. So I thought I'd show you guys how to do that. <laughs> so what you want to do first of all is you want to make sure this is a cremini mushroom. So it's brown in color, um, has a little more flavor than your white mushrooms. Um, and basically what I'm doing is if you're cleaning your mushrooms, you can rinse them off. Um, I, or you can take a damp paper towel or towel and just wipe off the dirt. Uh, but basically, you just want to make sure that you're not soaking your mushrooms in water because they will absorb water. Okay, so we have one done. Just want to show you guys some a little more chopping. Um, you can use a paring knife or you can use your chef's knife, as always. You can do this technique, this technique. Um, but I'm going to show you guys with the paring knife right here. Um, mushrooms are kind of perfect to practice slicing on just because they're so soft. So if you're new to slicing things, it's a good first thing to practice on because you're not going to have to apply a lot of pressure to get the slices. Remember, still doing the claw, but for the paring knife, we are using the tip of the knife. There you go. And then you have beautiful slices of mushroom. Um, what I would do now normally is I would toss these in a pan over medium high heat um, with some oil, um, salt and pepper, and then you just cook it for about five minutes until they kind of cook down to what you want them to be. Because the more you cook them down, the more the browner they'll get and the more caramelized they will get. Um, I personally think that they have the most flavor, um, the more caramelized they get. So I like to cook my mushrooms down quite a bit. Um, but some people just like want, just want a fresher flavor so they don't cook them down as much. Um, but as long as you're keeping an eye on them and you're stirring them, um, they shouldn't burn. And that nice like dark color is desirable because it means that um, the carbohydrates in mushrooms are caramelizing. And there's carbohydrates in um, pretty much every vegetable. That's what they are. They're the healthy, healthy, very healthy carbohydrates right there. <laughs> okay, so I got to show you the mushrooms. Okay, so now what I'm going to move on to is I want to show you guys how to prepare the beef. So this is the main um, part of the meal. So I just thought I would show you guys. Um, so we're using fast fry steaks. I absolutely love using fast fry steaks because um, they just cook so quickly. It's right in the name. It's that simple. Um, so but you can see it right here. Um, if you're looking for this in the grocery store, you will see that it says fast fry right in the name. Okay. So this is I have round fat, fast fry steaks that we're working with today. Um, I'll point you guys down so that you guys can kind of see how the marinade is coming along as I'm mixing it together. So this is our mixing bowl for the marinade. Um, and I did also want to say that fast fry steaks, uh, we're using the Eye of Round fast fry steak today, but you can also use um, 
the fast fry steaks are from different cuts as well. So there's top sirloin fast fry steaks, um, sirloin tip, um, the inside round. Um, so basically what keeps them all together is that they can, um, they cook very, very quickly. Okay, so we have everything here for our marinade. What I'm going to do, um, so this right here is um, the teriyaki sauce going in there. So it's pre-bottled teriyaki sauce going in. If you're really in a pinch, you could just use that. Uh, we're going to try and beef this sauce up a little bit today. So pardon the pun. We're going to try and beef up this marinade a little bit today with some added punches of flavor. Um, so we put in the teriyaki sauce. Now we're going to put in the soy sauce. There we go. We also have sriracha sauce. So it's a little bit of spice. There we go. Um, some sesame oil. There we go. I'm just going to set this aside for a quick sec because um, I'm going to show you a little bit about. So we need garlic and we also need some uh, grated ginger in here as well. Love ginger. That's very, very uh, popular in Korean dishes. Um, so how we're going to do start off with uh, these is we're going to use a bowl as we've talked about before to crush them and that'll help us take off the skin and release more juices as well. There we go. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to use my chef's knife and I'm just going to do a chop basically. Ooh, didn't quite get all the skin off there. And then you just do run your knife through it like this and that's how you mince something right there. So really that easy when you're trying to make something really, really tiny. This is the technique for that. And you're just chopping it until it is the correct size that you want it to be. There we go, very close now. Okay, there we go. So we're just gonna put all of that in there. There we go. Okay, so now what I wanna show you guys, um, I'm gonna give you guys a couple of fresh ginger tips right here as we go along, okay? So looking at the fresh ginger, I am gonna cut off the bottom because it looks pretty not great right there. And then what I'm going to do um, is to get some of this outer part off, you would take a spoon and you just kind of scrape it off. You can see actually how easily it comes off. And that way you're not um, wasting any of that delicious um, interior flesh of the ginger. So it's a really nice, easy way to make sure that you're getting all of this extra fibrous part off. It's not the end of the world if you get some of that in there though. So don't worry too much, but a spoon, I think you all see how easy and fast that was. So not an issue at all. And then what I like to do is, yes, you could use um, the same technique and you could run your knife through it like we did before. But what I really like to do um, with ginger is grate it because I feel like it releases more of the ginger juices. So that's what we'll do. And then you just go ahead and grate it. Might have to move it around a little bit. Okay, and there you go, it's that easy. A lot of it's stuck to the inside there, but you can already see just how juicy that is from grating it. Okay, let's actually put the juice right on in there. There we go. Kind of getting everything together, okay. And now I'm just gonna 
whisk this all up. There we go. And since this is going to act as a marinade for the beef, but it's also going to act um, as a sauce for the end, I'm just gonna grab a little bowl and reserve half of that so that um, we can really enjoy it at the end as an extra dipping sauce. Okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna pour some of it over. There we go. Clean up the edge there a little bit. Okay, and now it's time to just prep the beef over, okay? There we go. Okay, so we have our marinade already done. I'm just gonna grab our beef. I have round fast fry. You can see once I open this up just how skinny these cuts are so you'll get a really good idea for how fast they actually cook because you can just see how perfectly thin they are. So we'll put these out onto the board and I'm just going to cut them into strips so that they can be skewered. There we go. So um, if you are using something like a sirloin cut um, or if, maybe you're not sure if the cut you bought is actually tender or not. Um, for example, example this is um, a little bit of a, a tougher cut. So if you wanted to, you could use a super handy meat mallet like this and you could just kind of pound them out a little bit. And this actually helps tenderize the meat. So I'll just go ahead and do that as an example of something you can do to tenderize the meat. But also I do want to mention the fact that even the fact that we are cutting these into strips, that that is actually helping to tenderize um, because it helps cut muscle fibers that are in the beef. Okay, so you want them to be about an inch thick this way, this way, and we're gonna put them right into the marinade as we're cutting them, okay? It's really nice, and we're gonna get them nice, well-coated. Here we go. Pretty easy. Okay, this is looking so good. Um, the meat is such a nice bright red. There we go. Pretty simple right there. And I'm gonna actually just take the cutting board away right away uh, so that we don't cro end up cross contaminating. So I'll just take some of this stuff and this, because we're not gonna need to cut anymore, so we are good. I'll set that aside. Here is the meat in the marinade. I just have to mix it up, but before I mix it up, I am going to quickly go wash my hands so that I'm not cross-contaminating, okay? Oh, actually, what am I doing? I'm not going anywhere yet because I'm going to have to skewer these. So I will show you guys. So we will just mix this up a bit. You can use tongs, you can use your hands. We're just making sure that the beef is nice and well coated. Yummy, it looks fantastic. There we go. So since we decided to cut these into nice beautiful strips, um, one of the things that I did is I pre-soaked um, these really um, like small, short wooden skewers and we're going to feed them onto this, okay? 
I'm also going to preheat my pan over here to my right so that it's ready to cook the skewers once I have them, okay? Once they're then once they've started uh <laughs> once I have them on the sticks right here. Just reading over the recipe. It's about going to be we're going to cook over medium heat for 2 minutes on each side. Okay, there we go. So while you will get this going, So I, I like to do kind of a little bit of a design. So I kind of like to go back and forth. And it just gives a nice little waved design to the skewers, which is really nice. And then you just kind of pull it down. And there you have it. So this, this is kind of how we put skewers together, but this isn't the only way that you can make skewers. Uh, sorry, this isn't the only way that you can cook the beef. Another great way to prepare this dish um, is we could have just diced the beef. Um, and we that would have, once again, made the fibers in the meat shorter, which would have tenderized the meat. Um, and on top of that, what which would have been really nice as well, is um, it's just really easy and fast to cook, right? Because then you can skip this whole skewering process and just toss all of the, uh, <laughs> sorry, all of the diced meat into the pan and just cook it all at once. So that's another option as well. Okay. So we've made three of these. And I'm hoping that the pan will get hot pretty soon. There we go. Okay, so the pan is getting hot. So what I'm gonna do, kind of direct you guys this way and put the skewers in the pan. I want it to start sizzling. There we go, you can hear it. There we go. And we can put way more in this pan, but as mentioned, for simplicity, I do want to keep this video moving along. So I'll set these items aside. And I'm just gonna quickly go and wash my hands. Um, I'm gonna wash my hands now because that is how you avoid cross-contamination, okay? Okay, there we go. And you can already see how quickly the beef is cooking up. As mentioned, around two minutes on each side. In the meantime, I am gonna show you guys basically the showstopper of all of this, which is the egg um, on top, which does add that burst of yellow color that is so beautiful on the top of these types of bowls. So what you want to do is, um, what we're going to do is we grab an egg. Um, I did want to take note of the fact right here that brown eggs, white eggs have the same nutrient value. Okay, everybody. So brown eggs are not healthier than white, or are not any healthier than white eggs. They're both healthy. They're both good for you. It's just your preference. Slash, brown eggs come from a brown hen. So that's the difference, is the color of the hen egg came from. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take an egg and I'm gonna break it into 
um, this little bowl right here. Um, I'm doing this just because if you're new to cracking eggs, you want to make sure that you don't get any shell in it when it's cooking. So there we go. Just kind of make sure you didn't get any shell in there. Discard the egg. There you go. So we're waiting for um, the beef to finish cooking up right now. But then what we'll do is we'll put um, the, this egg in a lightly oiled non-stick pan. Um, and you basically cook it over medium low heat for around five minutes and you want to have that runny uh, yolk. So it's not going to take very long, um, but you want to make sure that the white part is completely cooked. You just want the yolk, the yellow part to be runny. Okay. And that's sunny side up. Oh. Here we go. So, just kind of putting these over. There we go. Very delicious. Okay, so that's just going to take a second longer. And then we'll get the egg going. Um, in the meantime, I will talk to you guys a little bit more about putting the bowl together. So right here, I have a bowl. So um, I'm using uh, just whole wheat noodles here. That's what I happen to have on hand. Um, but you can use, um, I would highly recommend using either rice or soba noodles for this recipe. Rice is my absolute favorite <laughs> for this recipe, um, but it can also be really nicely done with, um, <laughs> sorry, with uh, noodles as well. Soba noodles are really nice. They're they're thicker. They're very common in Asian cuisine. Um, I just couldn't have. I didn't uh, wasn't able to find them at the grocery store, and that's why I'm not using them today. Um, I don't want you guys to go too far out of your way if you can't find something. Um, it's just there's a lot going on right now, and if it's hard to find, um, if you happen to be at a grocery store that regularly sells soba noodles, then definitely give it a try. Otherwise, I would suggest using whole wheat noodles or rice as the base for this dish. Okay, so the beef is done. So I'm gonna set this aside on a plate. It's very yummy. There we go, yum. Okay, and then we pretty much have all of our toppings almost done. The only one that we're missing at this stage is our sunny side up egg. So I'm just gonna set this aside. I have a new pan. I turned this already down to medium low. We have a new pan right here. It's gonna heat up. And I have a little bit of oil here that I'm gonna use. It's very important to take the precautions to make sure that the egg doesn't stick <laughs> in the bottom of the pan because since the yolk is going to be runny, um, it's very easy to, um, to break that yolk when you're trying to get it out of the pan. If you don't grease the pan, use a nonstick skillet, all of these things. Okay, so this is pretty low. And I'm going to take my egg and my bowl and I'm just gonna pour it in here. There we go. And it'll just start to cook. There we go. I'll just grab that little, there we go. And you can kind of see what it looks like to start. There you go. So we're just gonna take um, a moment to put our bowl together while that starts to harden up. You can see that the inside of an egg is clear until it starts to cook and then it turns white and it gets harder. So that's kind of what we're waiting for right now. Okay, so I have my bowl of noodles right here. That's gonna be my base. And everything else that I'm putting around it is in front of me here, so you can see it. So we have, um, I'm just gonna take some of these delicious sweet and sour pickled carrots 
And I'll put these on top. Yummy, looks amazing. And then we'll take some of the daikon radish that we julienned. And we'll put that on top or made into matchsticks, however you want to say it. And then we have our cucumber. And you can already see just how much color is added to, um, to this bowl, right? Like it's already beautiful, already so colorful. Um, and then we have our sauteed mushrooms, which are so nicely caramelized that we will put on as well. Yum. And those are kind of salty because um, they've been salted and peppered. Just really nice. There we go. Um, and then I'm just going to brush a little bit of the marinade here onto the beef skewers. the marinade sauce that we worked on. There we go. And we'll just kind of set the beef here. Once it's been rubbed on a little bit. Just, I like my beef to be very saucy. So that's kind of what we're doing right there. And we can also use this as a sauce, which will be really nice. There's so much flavor in here. And there you go. Once we get the egg on top, it'll pretty much be ready to go. You get the idea of just how colorful this dish really is. Um, how basically all of these toppings come together and work really, really well together. Um, also, what I love about this bowl is that it does teach um, just really good food skills in general because what did we do? We learned how to cook meat, we le learned how to cook beef, skewer it, cook it really quickly. Um, we learned how to mix together a sauce, a simple sauce that tastes very good. We learned how to saute mushrooms. Um, we also learned how to julienne or make matchsticks of our vegetables. You learned a little bit about how you can use pickling um in something other than actually creating a pickle um and yeah just also what i love about this dish is that in terms of nutrients it has a little bit of everything you have your meat for your protein source you also have the protein coming over from the egg as well um, you also have a wide variety of vegetables as well as you have um, a whole grain or grain in the bottom of your bowl depending on what you end up putting into your bowl. Okay, so the egg is kind of just cooking away. It's not quite done yet, so I'll give you a little bit of a, a peek. There we go, it's almost there. Um, you can tell that uh, the part around the yolk is not quite white yet. There's still some transparent parts. So that's why I'm keeping it on, but you can see that it's just cooking away. There we go. So, and as mentioned, if you do want to grab this recipe, go to thinkbeef.ca. Um, at thinkbeef.ca, um, you can find little teaser videos, some instructional videos. Um, as mentioned, you can find um, the recipe um, where you can print it off, the shopping list, um, and all of these kind of tips and tricks to help you if you're new to the kitchen. So it's great for those reasons. Um, and yeah, this is like, this is great. The egg is almost done. There we go. I'm just gonna give this a bit of a look. There we go. Very close to being done. Okay. I'll just take it off so that you kind of get an idea of what the final bowl will look like. There we go. Maybe down. 
so you get a final idea what the bowl looks like. And there you have it. That is a ginger, beef, and mushroom bowl. Um, all you want to do is just dig in there and basically get into that runny yolk, and that's perfect. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for being here with me today, and I hope to see you guys next time. Thanks again. Bye.